Hey guys, I'm Sarah. I'm the leader for this week's discussion of Bound Feet and Western Clothes. Uh, I enjoyed this memoir a lot. I thought it was like a really fast and easy read. And what I appreciated about it so much was that we had spent time in these last two weeks really talking about these scholars and seeing them as like these national heroes of China, these great thinkers. We were able to come up with such innovative ways that they saw like the movement of Chinese society in the future. And I was really impressed by the essays that we read in the DeBerry last week. But this really showed like the kind of interpersonal pain that has to accompany that kind of like drastic social and ideological change in a society. I mean, to take someone who you might think is has these great ideas, just sensitive, uh, like a uh, great thinker, like uh, Suchi Mo, Yui's husband, who is so admired by all his friends and colleagues, then to see how he would treat his wife as sort of the symbol of the past and everything that he hates about Chinese tradition was really like moving, very interesting to me. So I want to talk about three questions I have. The symbolic, first of all, let's talk about what the symbolic value is in their relationship as something that speaks to the interpersonal side of ideological shifting in China in the 1900s. What can, what does their relationship tell us about the, uh, what's happening with families, what's happening between couples, what's happening between parents when we're seeing like these drastic changes in greater society. Uh, next, let's talk about the idea of national shame, which Yui says that, uh, uh, Sushi Mo practiced regularly every morning when he was in America. It's interesting to me to observe that this feeling of shame wasn't something that Yui identified with until it was projected onto her really by Sushi Mo constantly calling her a country bumpkin because uh, he was so ashamed of her and his marriage to her and tradition. So how do you imagine that national shame really spreads across the country and how do individuals at different levels of society cope with it? And finally, what are the unique difficulties that women faced in this time of like the paradigmatic ideological shifts and social upheaval? And how do these compare to the challenges that men were facing, particularly scholar men and men that uh, they had more power, were able to go and be foreign educated? How were these different individuals made to cope with what was going on in society around them and the changes that they were creating? All right, see you guys tomorrow.